So the modern recommendation in 2019 is to um, disable the TLS 1.0 protocol. Um, even some uh, recommendations say to disable TLS 1.1. Definitely, it's agreed, agreed upon to only enable TLS 1.2 if you can get away with it, that is. Uh, my own experience has been that if you disable TLS 1.0 without doing your research, um, you will break a lot of things. And in particular, if you don't patch SQL Server, uh, especially the older versions, versions older than uh, a SQL Server 2016, you will almost for sure break SQL servers to the point where it won't start as a service anymore. So anyways, um, here is a screenshot of an actual error I experienced where a TLS uh, 1.0 remediation basically broke T um, SQL server. And uh, the C in this particular scenario, SQL server would start as a service, but you cannot connect to it through SQL server management studio, either locally or remotely. That's not always the case, but th it was in this case. Now, to me, this was an unusual scenario because usually if you disable TLS 1.0 on a server that hosts SQL Server um, and that has not been patched appropriately, usually the service will not even start. In this particular case, the service did start, but no one could connect to it. This ended up being the fact that we disabled a particular cipher, which is related to IC RC4. Usually it's safe to disable RC4, but in this particular case, it seemed to break some things and we had to end up re-enabling re it. So here's one error. And here is another good indicator that I bring up. These are real errors. These aren't just screenshots I've uh, Googled or whatnot. These are actually real errors that I've... Uh, encountered. Um, so here's another one. And usually when you have these issues, you'll see the system log, possibly security log, you'll, it'll be full of S channel errors. They're not always obvious on what the issue is, but you'll, you'll, you'll know that it's something probably related to TLS for sure, or that you've disabled a cipher that you should not have. So, um, if SQL Server won't start after you've disabled TLS 1.0, you'll probably have to reverse that decision and re-enable TLS 1.0, and then you'll need to apply the patch. I mean, if you just Google search uh, TLS 1.2 in SQL Server, it'll bring you to this page, uh, which says TLS 1.2 support for Microsoft SQL Server, and it goes back to, all the way to 2008. Of course, this year, the... Uh, security support for 2008 expires, so you really should be moving at least towards 2012 and above. And you want to make sure that it's a, at a service pack level or cumulative update level that supports TLS 1.2. Additionally, I found it uh, beneficial, especially if you've done any in-place upgrades from 2008 to 2012, you want to upgrade to the .NET Framework uh, 4.62. And this is because I think older versions of .NET Framework did not natively support TLS uh, 1.2 only. So uh, this is another um, you know, precaution to make sure that your applications work after you disable legacy TLS. Additionally, if you support Crestron Fusion RV, uh, which we happen to support, there's these two registry key entries that are recommended to... Uh, to um, edit. This is the only product that I've seen personally that's, that requires this. Um, this is unusual, but I just wanted to include that in case you do have this product in your environment. And lastly, I'm usually not a fan of GUI utilities, but this one is pretty nice. It's called IIS uh, Crypto, and it's freeware, and it's by a company called Nartac. And I've heard of it for a couple of years. And it actually came in really um, useful to me um, not too long ago. So basically what this does is shows you what's enabled in your environment when you load it up. And you can click and choose what, what ciphers you want to enable, which protocols you want to enable. If you don't know this, I'll mention it right now, SSL 2.0 and SSL 3.0 should definitely be disabled in your environment. They, they serve no purpose anymore. They're ancient. I mean, these things are from the, the, the 90s, uh, so those are very safe to disable. 
If you don't disable TLS 1.0, at least disable SSL 2 and 3. Um, and if you can get away with it, disable TLS 1.0. I mean, truly, the recommendation is only to keep TLS 1.2 enabled if you can do it. Also, you want to, if you can get away with it, is disable the triple DES and any of the RC4 ciphers. But again, you have to be careful about this without, you really need to do your research and see what you, you're, especially if you're working with some older applications, what you can get away with. That being said, there's also a command line utility, I've, which I've not used. I, I'm usually, I, I've uh, exported registry keys for most of my um, <clears throat> TLS and SSL changes, and I also have some done in group policy. But really what this is doing, this GUI utility, what it's doing is, um, if I bring it back up, ultimately all this GUI utility is doing when you make these modifications, and if you were to hit apply, it's actually just making changes to your Windows registry, which you of course could do manually if you want to, or import a registry key. IIS Crypto just kind of makes it easier. Um, it's kind of a one-stop shop for all your SSL and TLS settings plus the ciphers. So it's it's kind of a nice in that regard. And in conclusion, I want to mention two things. So number one, this is very important. It's, it's really critical is that you understand that when you make these changes <clears throat> to TLS or SSL, even with this utility, whether you do it for registry or through this utility, they do not take effect until a reboot occurs. I mean, that's, I, I can't stress that enough. You don't want to make these changes, not reboot the server, and then have it reboot in a couple weeks or a month, and then suddenly SQL Server won't start or your application's broken uh, because you forgot that you made these changes uh, or your fellow sysadmins don't know that you made these changes. It, it becomes a detective investigation nightmare to, to try to track down what happened. So I strongly recommend that if you make these changes on a server, reboot it as soon as you can and see if any breakage occurs. If it does not, you're good. If it does, then you might need to do some patching. You might need to upgrade to the latest version of whatever application is running. Um, of course, you'll need to patch SQL Server, as I mentioned previously. Um, but you want to know that effect as soon as you can and not just have it randomly occur sometime in the future and then you don't know what happened, why your, why your server is no longer working. Um, so that's that. And secondly, I would like to say that I encountered a scenario um, that I think I mentioned a little bit earlier is that I had a particular situation where um, typically it's completely safe to disable RC4 um, but there was a single cipher um, version of RC4 that was disabled and this application would not work whatsoever. And so I just wanted to make that distinction that just be careful on when you're disabling ciphers, especially with legacy software, that you might break things. I'd say definitely it's safe to disable triple DES, but be careful if you're running with some old software, some older versions of the SQL Server when you disable RC4.